John Shipton. Bonjour. Nous vous recevons aujourd'hui pour une chaîne internet qui s'appelle Thinkerview. Nous sommes en direct. Est-ce que vous pouvez vous présenter succinctement Thank you. Uh, my name is John Shipton. I'm Julian Assange's father. I'm in France uh, for, to raise uh, awareness and support for Julian in his fight uh, for freedom from the United Kingdom court system and the Department of Justice of the United States. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous résumer la situation de Julian? Qui est Julian et qu'est-ce qui se passe en ce moment? Julian is uh, the editor-in-chief of WikiLeaks and started publishing uh, WikiLeaks in 2006. In 2010, had with uh, leaks from Chelsea Manning, or back then known as Bradley Manning, of uh, Iraq war files, Afghan war files, uh, the, the Guantanamo Bay files, collateral murder, all of these pushed Julian to the forefront of fame right throughout the Western world. The, uh, as a consequence of the exposures of crimes, Julian has since 2010 been pursued by the United States through the proxy of Sweden, the Swedish Prosecuting Authority, and the proxy of the United Kingdom. Equally, the complicity of Australia, his home country, because they're inactive. And so that's the current circumstances. If I could sum it up, it's uh, uh, 12 years of ceaseless hounding, savage malice, unscrupulous slander and calumny, vicious hatred have been heaped upon Julian year after year after year, particularly in uh, the United Kingdom and the United States. Vous avez vu Julian Kahn la dernière fois? Uh, last week, uh, last Thursday, we called into the prison. Uh, each visit takes uh, two hours, uh, but uh, often they don't bring Julian down. I don't know why. And so we waited uh, uh, 40 minutes. So we had about 45 minutes actual time with Julian. Yeah. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous résumer son état de santé? Est-ce que vous pouvez nous résumer ses conditions de détention? Well, he's in a, Julian is in a, in a category A maximum security prison titled Belmarsh, it's just out of London. Only people there are terrorists or murderers or rapists. Uh, the conditions that he lives in are in a small cell, 22 to 23 hours a day. This is probably categorized under the Istanbul Accords as solitary confinement. It's worsened over the period of COVID because the jail administration lost a lot of staff who were frightened of getting sick from COVID and uh, the prisoners consequently spend more time in their cells. However, the prison allowed Julian more telephone calls. So I was able to speak to Julian frequently uh, with time limited telephone calls, maximum 10 minutes. But you could have 10 minutes, and wait a couple of hours and have another 10 minutes. Comment, comment, euh, vous, quels sont les rapports que vous avez avec l'administration française et en particulier M. Dupont moretti qui était censé être son avocat Well, a, a couple of years ago, when Dupont moretti took up Julian's case as a lawyer, He had a, a press conference. There were 24 cameras there from press services around the world. Uh, at that time, I met uh, uh, Dupont Moretti. But uh, unfortunately, my French is schoolboy French and very poor, and Dupont Moretti doesn't speak English. So 
uh, we, any exchange we had was through uh, Antoine Bay, who worked with uh, Dupont Moretti. Now that uh, Moretti is a for, uh, justice minister, he of course uh, must abandon uh, supervision of Julian's case legally, and Anton Bay, who I like quite a lot, uh, now runs the case for Julian in France. Est-ce que la France vous a proposé une assistante de quelque manière que ce soit? No, I, uh, the assistance France gave is uh, by not joining in the worldwide unscrupulous slander, lies and calumnies. Fortunately, France didn't do that. Um, France has had its own severe difficulties over the last couple of years. And as a consequence, the concentration of the French people and the political elite have been upon France and its circumstances in the EU and geopolitically, etc. So one doesn't expect too much. And it's the quality of not attacking Julian is place France, places France and Germany in the forefront of being able to assist Julian in the future. Julian Assange a révélé énormément de choses sur le renseignement américain contre notre pays. Comment la France ne peut pas vous apporter plus d'aide que cela alors que Julian a révélé les écoutes de nos présidents, de nos entreprises clés, de nos deals. Comment vous interprétez la passivité intellectuelle de la France et la passivité technique d'assistance de la France well, you know, those revelations that WikiLeaks made and Julian made were of great service to France in, in enabling France to understand its current circumstances relative to the United States and relative to the United Kingdom and GCHQ and the NSA. This is important and in fact vital. But also it revealed that five of the great French technological companies had been plundered of their secrets, really, and the height of French technological achievement had moved to the United States in five essential areas. Equally, the WikiLeaks and Julian revealed that the European Community Bank had been listened to their contemplations and efforts made to move their contemplations more towards the benefit of the United States. The, another scandal is the interference in ele uh, French electoral processes by the NSA listening in. Finally, the coup de grace is the hacking of the president of France's private telephone. Each of these things causes in my view, the French elites to contemplate their own problems intensely. How can we stop this? They have now a debt of honour, in my view, to Julian Assange and WikiLeaks that can be fulfilled and waits there for to be fulfilled. Uh, honour as I understand it, in the French cultural system is really important. And adjusting that honour will, in my view, and I don't wish to ponti pontificate, I'm not speaking from a height here, I'm speaking as though we we're friends at dinner and talking about stuff. In my view, this is essential to move France to a position where French interests can be held foremost over and above 
geopolitical associations with great powers. Uh, I just point out two things, that there's now one train, 5,000 tonner, so in the EU they rose the limits uh, of, of one goods train from 4,270 tonnes to 5,200 tonnes. That's improving the links between the carriages. There's one every hour coming from China into Rotterdam. One every hour, 5,000 tonnes, since June. Before that, it was one every two hours. So this indicates to us that the future of France is in an association with the rest of the continent. The balance of the continent has moved very close and it's a continental association rather than a seaboard association. And that's really, I think, essential to understand. Well, I feel it's essential to understand the reality uh, of uh, the opportunity for France to assert itself in leadership of Europe. I mean no offence to Germany, but Germany has uh, relies on France geopolitically for obvious reasons, you know, the Second World War, it has some difficulties. So, uh, in fact, all of Europe rely on French diplomatic skill and French leadership in the EU uh, I think the other day, after the United States stole $90 billion, which is not a little bit of money, and also it not only steals $90 billion, the money, it also steals the integrated industrial effort of France. And building submarines is, the, is I'm told, it's more complex than a moon rocket. Okay, and it has a, a, an, an industrial verticality from the very bottom metallurgy to the very top electronics. And France has those capacities. Well, yes, have. yes. Yeah. I've got another question. J'ai une autre question concernant votre attitude face à la surveillance que vous devez subir tous les jours. Votre, votre téléphone, vos connexions Internet, les connexions Internet et les téléphones de vos amis, les gens qui peuvent vous suivre, qui peuvent vous épier, vous surveiller, psychologiquement, Comment vous faites pour en encaisser et vous endurcir face à votre vie privée qui se réduit comme peau de chagrin Well, I, I <laughs> oh, well, like you, Bernard, I no longer have a private life. Every because you're in the forefront of broadcasting in France, you will be looked at, overlooked constantly. And so I take no notice. They look at me, but so far, God willing, they haven't interfered with me. They haven't put any scandalous notes from my past in the newspapers. And... Uh, Pas encore, not yet. Yeah, so far, so far. So far. I take no notice. And I think like you, you take no notice, but you do understand that uh, we are watched. And if we go too far in our commentary, we will be destroyed. We are ready to be destroyed. We are French. We are French. We, are, we, we don't have any limits. When, when you, you push a France, a France French people, it's like wake up a fucking devil. And our our elite don't have any code of honor. But French people still remind our code. If I 
uh, with, without a, a sense of <laughs> flattery, without any flattery. Uh, you know, ever since uh, the Bastille fell, uh, France has been in the forefront of working out ways to get out of problems that the elites force upon us. I don't want to make enemies of the elites because they have to help us one way or another. I depend upon their decisions. However, uh, the, mm, the underpinning of every society, new society, like uh, you can't count England too much, but our society, the underpinning is equality, fraternity and liberty. The underpinning. We speak about it all the time, democracy and so on, choice, whatever. Yeah. But it underpins our attitude. We believe and we work towards the belief that we have some liberty, we have some equality and we have some fraternity. We work, we believe that. And when it's removed from us, we respond. Now, the first people to respond are always, <laughs> for some reason, why? We don't know. France. And so with the Guilégeon, they lost 11 people's lives. I think there were 1,700 serious injuries. Many people lost one eye. And yet they succeeded. They succeeded. Vous avez vendu votre maison pour assurer la défense de Julian Assange, pour assurer votre campagne à travers le monde pour toucher énormément de personnes. En France, on a l'habitude de dire « Méfie-toi de celui qui n'a plus rien à perdre ». Vous êtes prêt à aller jusqu'à où Well, uh, I, uh, you know, I did sell my house and uh, now I rent a house in the countryside, uh, which uh, gets quite cold in the winter time. But these things are not, they're no longer concerns. First of all, uh, I'm old. I don't have a worry. I don't have to make a family. I don't have to hold a house together. I can live in a tent if I want. I can feel it. And so I'm happy with that. And for three years, I've lived out of a suitcase, you know. This, I've been to 50 countries, I've been to Berlin eight times, and so on, in pursuit. So I don't worry about that. You know, um, I don't worry about COVID. I, I act sensibly. I don't make enemies of government. It's not my job to make enemies. My job simply is to find a path for Julian to get out of the mud. That's all. That's all my job is. En termes de vaccination, de soins, d'aide psychologique, est-ce que Julian a accès à la vaccination, accès aux moyens de protection comme des masques? Est-ce qu'il a assez de couverture Est-ce qu'il a euh, été malade Est-ce qu euh, est que l'administration pénitentiaire fait suffisamment attention à sa santé physique et mentale Est-ce qu'il a une aide psychologique uh, Well, I don't think so. I don't think there's any reason for a publisher and journalist and an intellectual who hasn't broken any laws to be in a maximum security jail 22 hours a day in a cell. I don't think so. As for medical treatment, Julian Assange is in the complete disposal of the jail administration. If he doesn't want to take a medicine, it goes on his list and it produces in court. If he does want to take a medicine, it equally goes on his list and produces in court. So with the vaccines, he, he has been vaccinated, of course, because all of the prisoners in the jail are vaccinated. So he has no choice in this. He has no choice about anything. He has no control over his body. He has only choice as to what he may think about from this day 
was from me, sorry, from this minute to the next minute. What his thoughts are, are his. The rest is in the complete control of the jail administration because it's a maximum security prison. Everything that a prisoner does in a maximum security prison is supervised. His cell is searched on a regular basis. So that's Julian's circumstance. Uh, Vidéo caméra, une dit celle. Est-ce qu'il y a des, des caméras de vidéo surveillance dans sa cellule? I, I, I don't know. But in the visitors' room, where they place us, when I visit Julian, there's uh, a camera every three meters in the ceiling. But in the middle, where they place the others, it uh, has a mezzanine a void above. And there's no cameras there, but they always place us under the high fidelity. So they can have a, a lip reading uh, programs, yeah, high fidelity lip reading program. And we are always placed under that. I speak to Julian like this. And when I have to discuss something, I speak like that so that they can't read my mouth. Yeah, that's the thing. Quand vous avez appris. Euh, que la, la CIA avait comme euh, plan l'assassinat ou le kidnapping de Julian Assange. Quelle a été votre réaction Comment vous avez compris Vous n'avez pas été surpris Uh, how it took so long to reveal what they're the CIA up to, you know. Um, they, yeah, how can I say this? Just let, uh, I'll get a grip of this. Okay. The CIA now run the drone, drone programs. The drone programs have targeting. When you read that a wedding party has been destroyed or a cortege funeral has been destroyed. This is targeting, it's not accidental. It's not because they saw a group of people dancing that they sent the drones down and blew it up. They destroy the high points of a society. The high points of a society is when two young people come together and the resources of the society and the, all of the training, the, all of the uh, living culture is represented by those two youthful people coming together to produce the next generation. That is the high point of human existence. It provides the next generation and provides continuity for the culture and worship of the ancestors in the sense that the immediate ancestors take the young people and push them forward. Well, when you destroy that, you destroy the inner growth and inner life of that society. They know that. They also know that the other high point of a society is a funeral cortege. The, we give thanks and we celebrate the life of the person who has died and is being buried. So we all gather together and we say thank you, goodbye, and we celebrate their life uh, in different ways. Some people cry, others, like the Irish, they have a drink or whatever, but we celebrate. They destroy that. They destroy it. Est-ce que vous avez déjà pensé à prendre les armes pour délivrer votre fils. Quand on voit les services secrets faire preuve de non de nonchalance, quand on voit des tentatives d'assassinat, quand on voit une ambassade qui a été infiltrée, quand on voit la calomnie, quand on voit euh, votre équipe calomniée, est-ce que vous n'êtes pas dit 
à la française, maintenant c'est terminé, je vais faire mon groupe commando et on va arrêter de, passez-moi l'expression, me chier dans les bottes. Ça, well, pourrait, prendre, ça uh, pourrait prendre plusieurs formes. Mais une forme plus violente que faire des kermesses, écrire des pancartes, faire des, des sourires à des journalistes qui n'en ont rien à faire. You know, uh, there's a beautiful thing, it's called patience. And with patience, you'll see the bodies of your enemies float down the river before Chinese your eyes. Chinese proverb. Um, and finishing my last statement with the, uh, um, the CIA and its targeting policies, these are policies, policies, you can't say it enough. I say it three times to call upon the forces of life to witness. Policy, policy, policy. The destruction of seven million people in the Middle East was a policy. The creation of 37 million refugees over the last 20 years, wandering the world looking for homes and ruining the, the societies that they came from and endangering the societies that they move into is a policy. Policies, policies, policies. And of course, I don't imagine taking up their way of seeing life, buying a gun and shooting people. I would like to see them humiliated, of course. I would like to see them removed from power, of course. I would like to see decent policies and I would like to see that these institutions that are so embedded in thinking about death in order to organise life, that the absurdity of that proposition, I would like to see that changed very much. And I work towards that in my own simple and modest way. Yeah. I think that answers your question, I'm not sure. Yes. Est-ce que vous avez pensé à faire une grève de la faim? Uh, I did uh, go without food for three weeks once. Um, I got rather thin. Uh, um, it wasn't a very wise thing to do. But I suppose I could. I have thought of it. Yeah. I have thought of uh, self-immolation. You know, to go and set myself on fire. I have thought of that, but is it's somehow contraindicative that they are destroying Julian, so I destroy myself, and they continue to destroy Julian. Also, I have I have a daughter this big, you know, Severin. Her name is. Uh, What would she do? So we're caught. We just do, um, we do the, the best we can. How do I say this? We do absolutely everything we can and we remain sensible and humane. This is our job. Without that, we are nothing. We are like them, that they sign another uh, legal instrument further torturing Julian Assange or they have a discussion and a meeting, how can we take the focus of this event, the persecution of Julian Assange, away from the crimes that we have all committed and make the focus on Julian? Okay, well, this is how we'll do it. We'll, make the, we'll suggest to the judge that she decides not to extradite Julian Assange to uh, America, because he's sick. And so everybody focuses on Julian Assange, not the seven million people who are slaughtered, not the pall of grief that hangs like a dark cloud over the entire Middle East, not the 37 million people looking for resettlement, not 
the million people that moved into Germany looking for resettlement, not the 500,000 that moved into Italy looking for resettlement, not the 650,000 that have passed through France looking for a life somewhere or other. Not that. We, so they, we focus, everybody focus, oh, Julian, you know, is suffering this, he might commit suicide, and you have an entire hearing, two days hearing with the Lord Chief Justice of the, uh, of the High Court in, uh, in England, focusing on and arguing about Julian's well-being and the CIA's, uh, um, instead of looking at the crimes that these people have committed over the last 20 years, which have been exposed by WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. That in itself is a, a crime we fight against. Si Julian est extradé vers les États-Unis, si l'Angleterre laisse faire, qu'est-ce qu'on va faire Qu'est-ce que vous allez faire I, I'll move to the United States and continue the, to, to fight. I won't, you know, I can't give in. I mean, no, I have no thought of giving in. I just, uh, I don't use hope as a tool. I don't use optimism as a tool. I just, what comes before me each day, I tackle to the best of my ability on the day. Of course, the ability, uh, one's ability goes up and down, you know. Some days you're good, some days you're not so good. But uh, th that's what I do. I never use hope as a, a tool of energy. I give hope to others, of course. I'm not, I don't like to be mean, but I don't use it to get out of bed. I get out of bed because there's this to do, that to do, and that to do. Quand est-ce qu'est est attendue la décision britannique sur la demande d'extradition des États-Unis well, <laughs> You know, after the hearing on the 27th and 28th, the lawyer outside the court told me he said to be a couple of weeks. Then another lawyer rang me up and said that it'll oh, be John a minimum six weeks. And then uh, I read in the paper it'll be uh, from Alexander Makouris. Uh, I read that it would be sometime mid-January, so, you know, like, uh, how long is a piece of string, Bernard? Quels sont les recours si le Royaume-Uni accède à la demande, à cette demande d'extradition? The, if the extradition is accepted, Julian will appeal to the, uh, to the Supreme Court. Equally, if the United States, if the extradition is refused, the United States will appeal, will appeal, okay. After two years on remand, Julian has the privilege, if you call it that, uh, uh, to appeal to the European Court of Human Rights for a bail application. The European Court of Human Rights will decide and probably will say yes more than likely will say, yes, you can have bail. But the United Kingdom doesn't have to take any notice of that ruling. It can say, go jump in the lake. Um, they have, there was the working group on arbitrary detentions conclusion in 2017, and that, the, that Julian was arbitrarily detained. They reissued their determination in stronger language in February 2018. In both cases, the United Kingdom said, we're not interested. Um, equally, Nils Melzer, in the United Nations Rapporteur on Torture, Professor of International Law at Glasgow University, issued a report stating that Julian was being psychologically tortured over a period of 10 years, and that he characterized it as a, a slow motion murder before our eyes. All, and he took to the jail 
two specialist psychiatrists to evaluate Julian or medical people who specialise in these matters. Equally, he outlined the abrogation of due process, procedure irre irregularities and abrogation of human rights that uh, Julian had undergone. Oh, and the conventions of asylum. All of those areas, particular legal contraventions, he outlined them in his report and they said not interested. Il a été autorisé à se marier. Comment vous interprétez le fait qu'il y ait eu des freins à cette union Well, it was uh, so. Uh, Julian made application, and, and Stella, of course, made application to the prison governor. Could they get married? They also made application to the Department of Justice. Could they get married? This was delayed and delayed and delayed. So uh, Julian's lawyers said that uh, we'll take you to court uh, after a certain date. 24 hours from that date, they said yes. A lawyer rang me up, a dear friend, uh, and said, John, they would have been smashed in court if they'd have taken it to court. So they only surrendered from force majeure, that's all, from no human impulse other than exercise of power did they surrender. And that's been consistent with the United Kingdom treatment of Julian Assange. I thought previously, if I could add this, I thought previously that all of this stemmed from the United States, that the United States was the magician behind the curtain. But I have changed my mind because for 12 years, the United Kingdom has exercised malice, savage malice. As usual. As usual, yes. As usual, as we see last week in the fishing dispute. Savage malice, unscrupulous, scandalous lies and calumnies. So British. Twelve years. Uh, what else have they done? Vicious hatred. So Julian's, as you know, Julian, uh, part of his philosophy or approach was transparency. They hated, they with vicious hatred, they attack transparency. They say yes, 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 but then you put in a, a freedom of application to the Crown Prosecuting Service who has between uh, nine and 11,000 pages on Julian and you get 350 pages. Oh, they ha hate transparency. Each month, each of the editors of the major newspapers and uh, television outlets in the United Kingdom meet in the Department of Defence. Can you imagine? They meet in the Department of Defence building and the Department of Defence instructs them on the areas of sensitivity, the current areas of sensitivity. And this is, you know, I mean, it, I describe it that way. They present it as, uh, as uh, the Department of Defence assisting the production of news and transparency and whatever, but it's actually further control. As you know, the United Kingdom has D notices. If they issue a D notice, <laughs> you can't tell anybody that you have the D notice, nor can you tell anybody what the subject matter of the D notice is. A D notice against the news. So, for example, they come in and put your D notice to you and they say, oh, you had this conversation with John Shipton. I'm sorry, you can't say to anybody you had the conversation. That would be against the law and put you in jail. And you can't publish the conversation. That's against the law and put you in jail. Goodbye. 
That's what they like. Est-ce que vous avez déjà essayé de vous mettre dans leur tête Est-ce que vous avez déjà essayé de comprendre leur psychologie Est-ce que vous avez déjà essayé de comprendre leur dessin Um, who, by the way, is back in hospital uh, uh, with pneumonia. I worry for him because he's a very close friend. You might send him your regards if you get time. I'll give you his email address. Um, and with his assistance and with uh, John Le Carré, who recently, you know, died, his last book gives us, well... <laughs> They're not going to tell us, but we can get a picture of the concerns of the, a certain strata, upper middle class, of uh, the United Kingdom by the production of what they produce, what literature. So you have John le Carré, you have Graham Greene, Ian Fleming, or, uh, George Orwell, all concerned with duplicity, spying, Silence, well, we all like some silence sometimes. Um, deceit and uh, sacrifice and betrayal. All of those books are concerned with that. And that's a stream of literature uh, that uh, is in, in, uh, in the United Kingdom. Well, in England, not the United Kingdom. Um, very different, say, from France with uh, Alexander Dumas, for example. So you see the, con the strength of that contrast uh, where uh, the uh, French inference in literature is upon the romantic elevation above the difficulties of life in order to transcend. You might say it's romantic. Uh, I don't, but people do. So, uh, in contrast to uh, England, where their intricate interweaving of deceit, silence, betrayal, um, and duplicity is a common factor. Yeah. Comment? Vous anticipez l'avenir du, du haut de votre âge. Comment, quel regard vous avez sur la société après avoir tra traversé toutes ces épreuves Et comment vous voyez l'avenir pour vos petits-enfants Oh, well, you know, at the moment, I, I don't have a, a good feel for the future of the West or Europe. Um, Um, because the vigour of outlook has moved to Russia, which remakes itself, and China, which has a different method of government where uh, finance is a public utility and uh, in, in Europe finance is a private utility. So the accumulation of capital and the financialization of our societies is not, well, it's not encouraging to me to think that my, my daughter, little daughter, um, will be forever in her life paying off mortgage or whatever. And the deliberate uh, escalation of value of real estate, we say real estate, we, We don't mean real estate, the escalation of value of a home. Now in Melbourne, there's such a shortage of homes that there's Facebook pages for young people to sh for share houses. You know, they go on Facebook, would you like to share and so on. And you, they have share houses. So youth can no longer have enough money to form families. You can't form a family. There's not enough money, so you have to live with your mum and dad or 
you can't, you don't form a family. In Germany, for example, 39% uh, of women over 40 don't have any children. Uh, in France, is similar to say. I'm sorry to say, in uh, uh, in Italy, it's even worse. That people can no longer form a family. This is just disaster. Est-ce que vous avez été approché par des services de renseignement extérieurs à ceux des États-Unis et d'Angleterre? Uh, I have some uh, friends who are uh, ex-Secret Service people. Australia? Australia, yeah. Uh, none from uh, Secret Service. Uh, divide it, let's divide it up. One of the techniques in my position would be for people to come and divert our interests down to blind alleys, go and do this, and we'll give you some help and some money, but go off and do that. And that's happened to me in the, in the United States, I took no notice, and that's happened to me in the United Kingdom. My two friends who are in uh, one or other aspect of secret services in Australia are very frank and helpful and guarded here. Yeah. On dit tout le temps qu'il y a, y a un, une légende urbaine chez les journalistes qui est que la Russie avait prévu d'exfiltrer Julian depuis l'ambassade d'Équateur. Est-ce que c'est vrai C'est pas vrai C'est encore des journalistes qui se sont fait monter la tête <rire> Well, it's certainly not true. He's still there, and, and the Russians are very, very capable people. Well, I'm not so sure when you go to Salisbury, uh, they cannot do a Novichok shock properly. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah, he's... They're like tourists. <laughs> like, yeah, like, uh, but uh, Petrov and Boroshov, they turn up all the time. I saw pictures of them flying an aeroplane the other no. day. Yeah. No. Petrov and Boroshov. <laughs> <laughs> So this comedy spread right around the world and that's become, you know, ridiculous. So equally, you know, the Russians are dragging, for what purpose, dragging Julian out of the, the embassy? For what purpose, you know? To what end? Very skilled and practical diplomatic corps in Russia, foremost in the world at the moment, uh, France used to be foremost, eh, but anyway, uh, foremost in the world at the moment is going to drag Julian out and have a gunfight outside Harrod. It's just, you know, fantasy, just a complete fantasy. There was some uh, years ago when Julian had a lot of visitors uh, in the embassy, there was some talk that he had a a hole in the floor that he'd go out and he'd go into one of the Harrods tunnels, because Harrods has a lot of tunnels, and go out through the Harrods tunnels and go night clubbing. It's, you know, it's just a, a, just a, a, a fantasy that people plan. Yeah. I get impatient with it, actually. Quand vous voyez la, la couardise je ne sais pas si notre traducteur va pouvoir traduire ça. La, 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 la couardise de notre, euh, de notre gouvernement, le manque de courage, ce côté veul et, et très politicien de faire semblant de s'occuper des choses. Est-ce que vous avez un message à leur faire passer Oui, yes, uh, you know, the, the the substance and the strength of a government is the unity of the polity behind it. This is vital. The only strength that a government has is the strength of its people, not its arrangements, not drinking Cristal with this woman who came to Paris the other day, I can't even remember the name, Harris or something. 
She's the vice president. Ah, of the United States, the small country who like every time. Yeah, and yeah, all, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah, yes, no, this they, one. They closed the road so we couldn't cross the road as, as she went to, to visit. Uh, um, and uh, um, I don't want to, how can I say this? And the ministers of state of France, having Cristal with the minister of state of the United States or whoever, That's not the security and the unity of the country. The security and unity, the strength of the country and its security rests within the population, their education, their health, their belief in the efficacy of the government and the understanding that the government won't go to water or won't, isn't, uh, afflicted with cowardice when a bully comes along. It can find a way, guile, cunning, deceit, find a way to protect the country rather than saying, oh, well, you can buy half of all trans. You can't buy it all. This sort of, you know, weak need cowardice. And we all understand that and we remove support from the government. And we concern ourselves with distractions. And the government sees this. And when it has to do really important things like organise a pandemic and a response to a pandemic and get scientists to look at the pandemic closely and get other scientists to evaluate the statistics and get other scientists to ev evaluate why the United States wants us all to the entire world to vaccinate. This is to, to, to protect the economy. For whatever reason, for whatever reason, our belief in the government that it'll go about that will give the, the government strength to, once it's made its decisions, to Uh, institute them. And we, we, we will believe, we'll take it up, we'll assist. But after, after, well, I don't want to insult people, but after Hollande, soft testicle, or Sarkozy, who wants to be president so badly, he says, well, I'll make a deal with you. You can take command of the force de frappe under NATO and I can be president. And they say, okay, you can be president. I think he's, it was known as, uh, as Sarkozy l'Americain. Sarkozy l'Americain. Yeah. On a d'autres noms, mais on va pas les dire ce soir. <laughs> euh... Question d'Internet. La plus grande leçon que nous, que nous donne l'épreuve subie par son fils n'est-elle pas que la vérité est incompatible avec l'idée de nation N'est-ce pas la plus grande peur de ces tortionnaires Um, can you repeat the question? Yeah, for sure. La, la, la plus grande leçon que nous donne l'épreuve subie par son fils n'est-elle pas que la vérité est incompatible avec l'idée de nation? N'est-ce pas la plus grande peur de ces tortionnaires? Uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think so. The, I think uh, the greatest fear of the people who torture Julian is that they will be held culpable for their crimes. That's their fear. They, don't, they want to be able to embark upon these murderous adventures without punishment. That's their fear. Their fears are practical, not impractical. I don't think they know the meaning of truth 
except to say, uh, well, it's true that, uh, you know, uh, my wife is going out with somebody else or, you know, that I don't think they know what truth is, frankly. Question Internet. Pour quelle raison principale pensez-vous que la France n'a jamais offert l'asile à Julian ni la Russie um, Well, the main reason, I think, is that France, along with other nations, believed that there would be a, a practical solution found diplomatically by the United Kingdom and Sweden and to a certain extent the United States because in 2010 uh, Vice President Biden said that this matter will embarrass the First Amendment of our constitution, so we don't want to go there. So, I, I don't... <clears throat> yeah, I think people waited, and in the end, they waited too long. I think that, uh, it, uh, speaking as I imagine France, I think uh, because uh, the justice minister in uh, the government of Uh, Olan discussed publicly uh, asylum for Julian. So it is a thought within the structure of a government in France. But uh, the opportunities and the danger of offering have grown since we witness more and more commitment from the United Kingdom and the United States to destroy Julian and to destroy the idea of holding on the internet data which allows the growth of a forum amongst the populace. And the forum can precipitate out and do its own analysis and come to conclusions with themselves and their friends, families, their community, their uh, wider community, their electorates, that certain actions uh, they don't want, they don't want the government to do this, they'd rather to do that. Holding that information on the internet creates, a, well, a giant forum for discussion. And that discussion precipitates out meanings. You can see the results. It just If I can run this past you, I'll try and do it uh, in an interesting fashion. So the Guantanamo Bay files, the collateral murder, we saw the murder of 18 people, the Iraq war files, the Afghan war files, they descended upon the populace of the United States and the English-speaking countries in, with more effect than the non-English-speaking countries. It precipitates down like rain and soaks into the soil of the culture. Empires are very slow to turn around, but soaking into the, the soil, the culture, it had a result. And that result is manifested in two things. An aphorism rose up, held by the people, an aphorism rising up as a historical fact. Endless wars. That didn't come from top. It rose up from the bottom to describe a circumstance, uh, of a political circumstance of a state action. Endless wars. Then, slowly, the support by the populace was removed. This populace became pacific to the wars. Not anti-war, not pro-war, but pacific. No war. We don't want it. We're sick of it. The wars ended. Afghanistan stopped. They pulled out. 
a disaster for them, but great for us. Iraq war, the phenomenon of Iraq war, it's over, they're gone. Guantanamo Bay, just about closed. 80 people left there, they can't find places for them, but they want to close it, that foul excrescence on the face of justice in the world. The Syria, they're just about gone from there, they've been defeated. The disaster of Libya, recognised by everybody now as a tragedy. The lesson of Libya to the other nations of the world, recognised now the lessons of Libya. You can't let these people do anything. They have to be held to law. So you can see that those revelations have an effect of stopping wars. Uh, one more example. Oh, no, there's three more, but I'll do one more. One more. No, oh, OK. One of the cables released, an American cable from the uh, uh, embassy, the, <laughs> the green zone in Baghdad, to the State Department. It was released by WikiLeaks, published equally published, of course, by Krypton, John Young's site, and equally published by Freetag. But we deal with this one. A group of American soldiers went into a house, which is an extended family, and murdered everybody, the children, mums, dads, uncles, aunties, brothers, sisters, the lot, every single one of them, contemplating that they'd get caught for this crime they called in an airstrike on the house and obliterated from the earth all evidence forever of the existence of that family. Gone. That was described in a cable. The, it was read by members of the Iraqi parliament. Somehow, some magic way, we don't understand how, that parliament of the, that destroyed country gathered together the courage, the strength of will, the guts, and said, we will not sign the Status of Forces Agreement, the SOFA. We will not sign it. Any American a soldier, any allied soldier, American and its allied, that commits a crime in Iraq will be tried for that crime. That's it. They withdrew the troops. A revelation stopped a war. Really important. A revelation stopped the war in Iraq. And they had to go about it in a different way and cultivate ISIS and all that sort of thing. But however, a revelation stopped a war. Your work as journalists can stop wars. Another one. Another one. The cables also covered the removal of the Chagos Islanders from their islands. All of them, every single one, even the dogs, were taken from the Chagos Islands and dumped in Mauritius. One of the islands was given over to the United States for an air base we all know as Diego Garcia. The Chagos Islanders and their lawyers saw the cable and took those, took the United Kingdom to the International Court of Justice and won. The United Kingdom appealed and they prevailed, the Chagos Islanders prevailed again and they're seeking compensation. Another one, a, an American lawyer who lives in England, Clive Stafford Smith, established an NGO called Reprieve. And it's concentrated on getting people, as prisoners, out of Guantanamo Bay. As you know, most of the people there were innocent of any crime. The cables revealed that an English citizen or a UK citizen, a British citizen, was being tortured by pieces being cut off his dick, or his penis. <laughs> he was able to argue the freedom of people. So that's another circumstance. So stop wars, bring justice, 
bring justice to the Chagos Islanders and compensation. And finally, environmentalism. WikiLeaks published uh, an, a, a oh, this is a bit ugly, uh, on Figura, which is an English company that took, a UK company, that took e-waste and dumped it off the coast of Africa, poisoning the fishing. A hundred and, I think it's 127, forgive me, my memory not accurate for numbers. 127 villages. The villages are destroyed. They can't eat this, but 127 died of poison, shitting themselves, pissing themselves, unable to walk, nervous uh, deterioration. You know, their nerves didn't operate anymore. This was published uh, and uh, this uh, enabled lawyers uh, and NGOs to assist and to seek uh, compensation. And that dumping of e-waste uh, off the coast of Africa stopped. Vous avez sûrement dû lire la partie sur Abu Ghraib et la partie sur Guantanamo sur les techniques de torture employées par les états unis Quelles sont pour vous la pire chose que vous avez pu lire faite sur des hommes par d'autres hommes You know, structurally, the worst thing I've ever read was uh, the notes by John Yu, who was the Attorney General of the United States, arguing that, that uh, the torture was okay. It was okay to torture. Every single country in the world, the United Nations, in fact, America in itself, had banned torture. And then John Yu, the Attorney General of the United States in the Bush II government, argues convincingly for them the torture's okay. After that, it's open slather. Black sites in Poland, black sites in the Ukraine, on and on it goes. So I particular circumstances of torture, like uh, that uh, Khalif being waterboarded 84 times and losing his marbles completely and just becoming a zombie. The point of, of course, of waterboarding is not to get you to confess to anything, it's to get you to confess to a particular thing. People don't realise that, that the point of this torture is to get you to say a particular thing. That they want to, to hear. Yeah, that they, you know, blew up the towers or whatever it was, whatever the, the sadists have in their mind. But what, what uh, I found particularly nauseating was that the promotion of sadism as a policy of the United States government. That's, uh, you know... It's out there, way out there in the areas of being shocking. Est-ce qu'un jour vous pardonnerez aux États-Unis, ou du moins au gouvernement américain Well, yeah, you, it's the law of life, you know, that you, there's only one thing you can't forgive, and that's attacks against children. The rest you can forgive. It's human to earth. But attacking children, it's finished. I can't go there. I can't go there. Est-ce que vous, à question d'Internet, a-t-il des communications avec les candidats à la présidentielle pour leur demander de se positionner sur l'asile en France de Julian Assange? No, you know, as I make it a rule to only have a private conversation with politicians and not to meet them if possible. Uh, I, I, work, uh, I work from, uh, you know, the ground up and w uh, that's my job, you know, is to work from the ground upwards. I leave uh, negotiations with 
politicians and senior bureaucrats to other people who, for example, uh, if you propose a certain thing, you know, a certain avenue uh, that Julian have to be, uh, say, given a visa to uh, uh, come and seek asylum in France. If one proposes that, have to have the mechanisms, the knowledge of the mechanisms, the knowledge of the administrative techniques, the knowledge of the laws wherein this would fit. And I don't have that knowledge. That's a professional circumstance. So if the work that we do from the ground up causes enough political circumstance for the professionals to put their minds onto how to solve the problem in the practical circumstances of blending laws, of thinking of diplomatic face-saving ways. That's their job. My job is to, you know, speak to you. Yeah. Pour nous, on vous donnerait l'asile tout de suite. Parce qu'il n'y a pas plus français qu'un Julian Assange, en fait. It might, can't be, sorry? No. no. Uh, you know, I just really let Yeah, this is a good subject. Then we can start there. This is what we start, where we started an, an hour and a half ago. Okay. Julian, WikiLeaks was first registered in France. WikiLeaks fought its first court case for publication in France. Julian, at that time, lived in the Marais, had a French family. He was on his way back to France to his family when arrested in, in the United Kingdom where he's now been for 13 years. It's a long, you know, it's a long journey. It's 26 miles across the, the, the channel and now it takes 12, 13 years to get there. So in that, the, the, um, in that circumstances, the affiliation, I have a grandchild in France. I'm concerned in my way for France, uh, you know, my modest way for France. I enjoy being here. Um, the gifts, so go from there to the gifts that Julian WikiLeaks made to the elites of France and consequently to the people of France. The understandings that we just rapidly covered the uh, NSA listening in to the president's phone calls, private phone calls, mind you, ringing his wife and saying, you know, can we have a bottle of wine with dinner or, or something, private phone call. The uh, manipulation of the French electoral system, the revealing that, that how it was done and when it was done, the... Uh, listening in and manipulation of the the uh, European Community Bank, oh, for God's sake, so important, diverting, the uh, facilitating, the revealing of the NSA and the GCHQ, facilitating the stealing and plundering of the high points of French technology from five really vital French companies. So, you know, Julian is France. En France, on a vu les Américains s'immiscer sur le deal des sous-marins. On aurait pu attendre, comme mesure de rétorsion de la France, qu'elle donne l'asile à Julian Assange. Comment vous expliquez qu'on l'ait toujours pas fait c'est à cause du fait que la France est dépendante en termes de renseignements américains ou c'est à cause que la France ne serait pas ou ne sera pas capable d'assurer la sécurité de Julian sur son propre territoire contre les services secrets américains qui tenteraient de l'assassiner well, I, I think France can guarantee Julian's 
Ce soir, Batit. I think they could, you know. In Corsica. <laughs> In Corsica, we can protect Julian. You know, because Corsican guys has got a honor code. Yes. And they respect it until the death. Yes, I, I understand. I, I, um, well, this is interesting. As I understand it, there were 17 attempts against de Gaulle's life while he was president. Those attempts were prevented by a Corsican criminal uh, and his bodyguard was organised by a man who uh, would have colourful <laughs> and successfully prevented. So I, I believe that Julian would be more or less safe here. However, the, the reasons for, for what arrangements President Macron and his uh, foreign service advisers have made, have made with the United States over the robbery of $90 billion, dollars. I can't guess that. However, I did see that the, the, uh, an official state visit was made by the Vice President Camilla Harris to, to France as a sort of an apology. Well, It's an insult. Yeah. It's a fucking insult. Yeah, They yeah. send the second knife yeah. <laughs> to ask to apologize. Yeah, uh -huh. It's a fucking joke. Uh, uh, I think so. I mean, uh, you know. And you know what? We don't have any American ambassador in France. We only have a chargé de mission. Okay. It ah. proves the respect that ah. they, they've got for us. It's it's a nice. It's so nice. Well, uh, Sorry to disturb. disturb no, you. no. Uh, you, you know, uh, I I try to make it look ridiculous <laughs> that that they have this, they block off uh, the Champs-Élysées and they drive up and down with the cortege, uh, cost France money uh, uh, as a favour to France for stealing $90 billion. dollars. It's very comic, you know. This is uh, unsatisfactory. And I speculate, well, I don't. I read that people speculate that over the next five years, because of the colour revolution against de Gaulle in 68, which shocks me because I was young then and I was on the wrong side. Um, but uh, uh, then the understandings of colour revolutions now and how it works out, that over the next five years, France will make every effort and so will associ associated companies So, sorry, associated countries with France will make every effort to prepare partially each year, each month, each minute for further independence so that this sort of thing doesn't happen again. <sighs> there's no other way. You, you think there's another way? You think that to be continually plundered by the United States is somehow going to make France wealthy, the population healthy, the population educated? Forget about it. There's only one way to stop the plunder, and that's more independence. Yeah. Or nuke them. We can nuke them. Yeah? We can nuke them. Well, you have the force de frappe. Uh, uh, it is... I imagine the centerpiece of a European army is a, a, um, a great Frenchman uh, who established uh, the Erasmus project. Uh, Frank Bianchieri. Yeah, yeah. Bian yeah. Pay à son âme. He's dead uh, since maybe yeah, six yeah, or seven yeah. years. But he, he uh, w w was a. I corresponded with him, and I, I read. Brilliant guy. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He speculated, uh, now it's 10 years past, well, 11 years past, that what would happen, what had to happen was that the force de frappe become the centerpiece of a European army. So I believe at negotiation with Biden after the stealing of the $90 billion dollars that the European army has the 
policy of a European army is now f growing and is to a fullness. We need to pray for it, but I'm not so sure. Well, uh, Frank, you said that it's going to come. The, every, <laughs> you know. On arrive à, à la fin de notre interview. Est-ce que yeah. vous voulez qu'on parle de quelque chose en particulier tous les deux avec la communauté Est-ce que vous voulez parler de quelque chose en, en particulier No, no. Uh, just one thing. I find that everything that's everything comes up from the mass of us that the the an inventive capacity rests within the soul of the nation or to use uh, not religious talk but rests within the within within the people themselves and so it's all it requires again is for us to converse with each other over our concerns. And this creates a, a social political circumstance and a historical change. That's all that's required. We don't need to, to uh, make any uh, special efforts to go to the Sorbonne or something, although education is important, but to converse with each other over our concerns and you will see that the Gilégeon will manifest itself again in Gilégeon. other areas. Gilégeon. 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 Parfait. Uh, will manifest itself again and again and again. This is my belief. Est-ce que vous avez trois livres à recommander à notre communauté Oh, oh. You know, um, I like, uh, uh, one book I like is a, a, a Faculte on Madness. I like uh, uh, Georges Batty on Death. Um, and uh, I like uh, Frederick uh, Nietzsche uh, on the understanding that, uh, the, that uh, how can I say this? I like Friedrich Nietzsche on the understanding that belief that you willed it, that you willed your life, increases your capacity to order your life. You believe that you willed it, I willed it thus. Even the worst thing you've done in your life, I willed it thus. It fleshes out the soul and gives you a lot of strength. And this is important. For um, to burden yourself with guilt all the time is corrosive to action. So take no notice of people who say you'll use too much petrol and kill the birds if you drive down to the shop. Forget about it. Don't use any guilt. Just use practicality. If I walk to the shop, I'll get a bit of exercise and I might be able to say hello to my friend as I bump into on the way. That's the circumstance. Not the circumstance that I feel bad because I used a little bit of petrol and went up in the air and the bird died. It's absurd. Just the practical circumstances of acting in your family's interest foremost and then your own interest second. Some other books for our communities to advise us? Uh, uh, well, I, 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 you know, I, I don't have any in mind. Too Et, many books. Est-ce que vous avez un autre conseil pour les jeunes générations? Oh, yes. <laughs> Just get on with it. Just the, and take no notice of old fogies like me. Get on your in. This is the, a really fabulous thing that the, uh, the times, how do you say the times in French? Kill the, the tump, the tump, the times, the, the zeitgeist. Your zeitgeist. L'air du temps. L'air du temps. Your zeitgeist, your times, 
are so absolutely different than mine. When I grew up, our concerns were housing, education, dis distribution of wealth, the building of a country, because it was just after the war. These were our concerns. The cohesion of a country, the pr provision of health care, the provision of opportunities of education to men and women equally. These were our concerns. Your zeitgeist, your times are so different. And so I have no, uh, I have no advice that is suitable, that fits in to your times. That's for young people. Because my times are so different. It's like, well, I think uh, they say, uh, the past is another country. Uh, just get on with it. Take no notice of, of uh, anybody who wants to make you feel guilty. Um, I think it says in the Bible somewhere that Satan is... Uh, the person who m makes you want, who wants to make you feel guilty. Guilt is a corrosive pain brought to you by accusation from other people. Take some freedom and act in your own interests and your family's interests. John, thank you so much. Okay.